George's eyes go to and fro while Kate Bender commences the seance. He can hear whispers and voices around him as he feels like he's being watched. Marianne murmurs nervously and George reaches down to comfort her. As he looks back up behind Kate, he sees Pa Bender, Gebhardt, and Ma Bender. He looks back down at Marianne as she starts to cry. George looks back up and they are gone. Scared, George looks around and just before he turns around, BAM! I didn't see you there. Something big is going on here. From hunting ghosts to Bigfoot. Paranormal, UFOs, true crime, and more. We won't just be spouting articles. I was researching for your entertainment. The beginning of a new world. <laughs> the best guac you'll ever fucking eat. True story. It's basically like one day you walk outside and you see that the ants are playing with matches. This, this is, is the Black, Black Cat, Cat Report. Report. See you on the other side. Welcome to the Black Cat Report. I'm Joey, your host at this out. Our ghoulish innkeeper, Betsabe, is out today and will be back next week. But here and ready to take your luggage off your hands and maybe your life, the wacky bellman Gil. Hello. <laughs> today we get into the second and last part of our series on the Benders, the first serial killer family. Almost like the first family, like in the White House. But this house is gray, disgusting, and full of death and flies. That just kind of sounds like the White House. Yeah, yeah, the swamp, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's the gray house. Yeah. 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 Well, anyways, let's get back into the story. We have the Benders settled into their new home in Cherryville, Kansas, while their Airbnb is up and running, and their Grow Cry store <laughs> is booming. With flies. With flies. Well... I mean, they have some things, I suppose, but to some, it's boom. To them, it's booming. <laughs> Mostly just a used mattress outlet <laughs> comprised of like wooden pallets and hay filled with bed bugs. Well, that's kind of the their bed, right? That's what they love. Yeah, right. That's why they're there. <laughs> just as as snug as a bug in a bed bug. Ha 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 ha. Oh, it itches. <laughs> well, the Adams family on meth is escaping blame for the crazy deaths that happen. But they haven't just been sitting on their heels. <clears throat> Kate got her a job at the local hotel tavern. Gebhardt is wowing people with his quotations from the Bible. <laughs> and the elder benders are running the Grow Cry store. What do I, I, I have to stop you there real quick. I know we're recapping and I'm totally ruining it. But like, mm -hmm. I feel like back in this time period, right? So we're in the 1800s, correct? Mm -hmm. 1870s. Right. Yep. 1870s, right? I feel like it was not like a rare or impressive thing to be able to quote the Bible. Considering that, like, that was people's main form of education, just in general. <laughs> and, yeah. Like, and it was also one of the only forms of entertainment that existed was everybody getting a paranormal fix every week going to church on Sunday. You know, like, everybody could quote yeah. the Bible. Like, how, I don't know. The big thing for him, though, mm -hmm. and, and I think set him apart with other people, the is accent. that he lit, they could lit, the accent, he could literally they could name a scripture mm -hmm. or like a, a verse and he'd be like, know where the verse is and then repeat the whole quote for them. So he like studied the Bible like it was the 1870s, really, honestly. Gotcha. Like he, he studied, the like <laughs> yeah. he knew exactly what he was, uh, where to quote from, how to use it too, I think was a big thing was he would, and, and because they called him simple at that time, mm. I think that made it even more amazing to them that he could, in a, in essence, quote anything, which is, funny but yeah <laughs> it kind of just sounds like they all had and rightfully so a terrible impression of him mm -hmm. and like he yeah you're right like he just kind of like superseded that like that expectation of him and he's like no actually i'm just slightly above average you know yeah yeah no he wasn't i mean he wasn't a genius he did you know he did hide behind a, a simple demeanor though Mm -hmm. And he was cunning, and I think that's the biggest thing that we'll find out and <laughs> found out last episode is he's a little cunning too. I'm but gonna, the whole family is. I'm gonna say the cunningness probably just comes from most people not being able to understand his accent. Yeah, but that's just well. Yeah, yeah. I, I think he, he had the lesser of the accents compared to the uh, Bender family. The dad, I mean, he just grunted. <laughs> he was just grunting English, that. remember? And then the Ma was just a Dutch old crone, you know, that they didn't like. And I'm Kate like, was the like, she was the reason why people came. She got people there. She was seance, did seances, 
had that pretend love for people, really wanted to help in yeah. quotations. Flashed her ankles. <clears throat> Flashed them ankles for all them boys at the church, and they were swooning. Mm. Well, they also had one of the only real ends, <laughs> in quotations, <laughs> out near the Osage Trail. The Osage Trail was like a big trail getting through Kansas so that uh-huh. people can get from town to town, and there wasn't really much on it, so it that's why they got the uh, house on that piece of land. Mm-hmm. This was the only road open for travel at the time through the area. So honestly, it's easy to see why people kept coming through looking for rest, right? Even though it was a terrible place to rest. Where, um, where was everybody trying to go? They were trying to get out to Texas? They're going out west. They're going okay. out to Colorado. Yeah, Kansas going through Colorado. And some were going up to Wyoming. One day and... I'm going to legalize weed here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what they said. <laughs> Well, even with all the rumors of the people missing, it was the only way to get through the area. Okay. Well, here we are with so many people already missing and about three more added to the papers in December of 1872. Okay. John Greary, Red Smith, and Abigail Roberts were all found murdered on the property of the Benders in the Apple Orchard. Again, we're just giving these names because nobody really knows what happened to them. They were just found. Okay. And... A lot of, you know, there's not DNA evidence they couldn't recreate the crime. We'll recreate it later of what happened to one family and then pretty much what is supposed to happen to all the families. Gotcha. There weren't any really records, so that's kind of why we're kind of skipping ahead. Yeah. Um, If you remember George Longcore from last episode and his daughter, Marianne, they both went missing. Obviously, in our last story ending, we can kind of guess and surmise what happened to them. But the poor man who had not long before just lost his wife and son and was also still grieving when he perched the team of horses to pull his wagon so he could travel to get his family to Iowa because he was a blacksmith, so he was very well sought. That's such a well, grieving that's such a grieving move. You know right? what I'm saying? It's just, He's just like, like oh, I gotta go. Lost part of my family, time to buy a team of horses. Yeah, yeah. Like, well, it's that, the, the well, man. that was the equivalent of a midlife crisis back then. But like, literally, to it's move. what yeah. happened to people that caused a midlife crisis back then is half your family randomly died of dysentery. You know, so yep. it's like, what do you do? You can't get a Corvette, so you get a stallion. You know, yep. You go for well, the Mustang. But. Exactly. <laughs> That's I guess why they say it. Well, the man he purchased the horses from was named a neighbor named Doctor William York. Okay, so. This guy is very important to this story, especially his family. So, Dr. William York was a military veteran and also a politician. In the book, which I will name at the end of the episode, and I named at the end of last episode um, in the credits, um, he they go into grave detail explaining his political career. I really don't want to explain his political career, so... I think it's just kind of like extra surrounding information. So, but we are going to go into his, uh, his military career just to kind of get how he, he gets to this. You need to save that other stuff, that super juicy stuff for a Patreon we don't have. I'm sure that would get people like kicking in the doors digitally. It's, I could, I could, I will. And, and it's coming actually. Me and Gil are working on a bunch of stuff for you guys. A little thing coming. So a little little hint, little hint coming. Yeah. A little, little bag of nightmares coming your way. Yeah. So, William York fought for the Union Army and was captured during a raid of his encampment by the Confederacy. He was taken to a Confederate prisoner of war camp called Camp Ford. Well, Camp Ford was a notorious, horrible prisoner of war camp in the Civil War. I know a lot of you don't know about it. Can you explain to me an example of a non-notorious, horrible war camp during the Civil War? (laughs) Well, this one was uh, the punishments did not fit the crime. A lot of them, uh, it, it, yeah, the punishments <laughs> did not fit the crime. A you lot can of never stuff. play Sudoku again. No! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they took away all their pencils. No! Well, he and his soldiers had to go on a grueling trek. They took off all their hats, boots, and clothes, and they're forced to walk 340 miles in the Louisiana summer. <laughs> Adjusted for the, the inflation camp. of not having modern roads back then, that's over yep. 4 million miles. Yeah. 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 Not a real mathematical number. But yeah, they well, had to, that's fucking insane though. Yeah. Like that amount of miles, I'm going to, at that point, that is a planned march 
to just like weed out the numbers. Like there's, yeah. there was no, I mean, everything back then was like troop movements and logistics and everything yep. was fucking walking. Like yep. everything was walking. And so half the fucking time, motherfuckers were eating their horses to survive, all right? Like yep. this shit was walking through yeah. unkept, untamed, at least by European standards, like wilderness, right? Yeah. Key, key point there. Um, like the half the time, the First Nations folks were like, "Why don't why don't they just use the trail that we have? Uh, yeah, just, that we made. Yeah, yeah right. you know how we have this whole trail. Uh, yeah, never. They'll figure it out. They never figured it out. They just walked through the woods. And, yeah, and it was you know it was a small Confederacy band, so it was like they're just raiders of camps, and that's kind of what they did to yeah. grab prisoners of war to bring them back, and that was a big thing in the Civil War is raiding each other's camps to kind of dwindle their numbers, give some like. I don't know, demoralized morale. It, it happened a lot in those days. And camps, prisoner of war camps were not good in this time no. either. I mean, think about it. Like all the diseases spreading, even in just the well-maintained armies. Yeah, no, the like diseases upper were brass, spreading through those. Yeah. Upper brass was still eating like hard tack and fucking boiling yeah. their boots in the winter. Like there's yep. no way <laughs> like, these camps yeah. got treated well. No, and this is the opposite end of it, which is yeah. worse. And think about the Japanese march that they had when they just let people die. This is, they went almost, I think, longer than the march uh, in World War II where the prisoners Baton? of war were taken and just Baton stabbed. march? Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. And similar to that. So, but, you know, they weren't in the summer, I don't think. So I don't think they had this much heat, but <laughs> still all bad. Well, so. Due to the death of one of the guards when they got to the camp, because there was a small little rebellion. <laughs> there was only two guards, <laughs> just for reference. Oh, there's, a, there's a few guards, okay. but during the 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 prisoners formed stage like a, a tiny rebellion to try to escape. William and his fellow prisoners were ended up being tortured. We cut this, boys. There's literally only a letter left on the door. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't leave, please. <laughs> Damn it! If, if we didn't, yeah, I love guess we can't leave so much. Yeah, <laughs> but what if we all just blow really strongly from the corner? Shit, they taped it down. No, we can't get the do- we can't get the note off. Damn well, it. basically, which is horrifying. <laughs> this is the torture that happened. They were hung by their thumbs. Oh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. No, and and so that ah. is not a. Yeah, no, they no, no, literally no. left them there till most of the soldiers fell unconscious and died. That's from fucking starvation. Yeah. But, well, is, it, oh. a lot of it, it's just, it's terrible. Like, they hung them for days because they're just like, that's even worse. Like, if you get hung by the neck, yeah, it's really bad. Yeah. And at most, you're going to live, like, two hours, maybe. Uh, but And, and that's going to be horrible. But this is, like, days being hung. So that I think no. they just die of, of no water. They die yeah. of um, the hydration. Yeah. And, um, but William, uh, like, we th- like we're introducing him, he survived. So... He ended up afterwards, got out of the camp once the Civil War ended, decided, hey, I'm going to move. Um, so moved to Kansas. And mm-hmm. afterwards, he ended up marrying a woman named Mary. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah I know he married a woman named Mary. Okay, Mary, Gil, Mary. I get it. Yeah, I get yeah, it. Okay. I get yeah, it, no, Gil. I'm just saying. I, I honestly think it was, um, I, I wasn't even going to make a joke about that. I was going to say that he probably just had to move somewhere to, you know, not get made fun of for his incredibly elongated thumbs. Anyways, I'm sure well, Mary I mean, was yeah. very happy. Um, I'm sure he kept giving her the thumbs up. Um, so Mary <laughs> was a teacher who ended up teaching emancipated slaves. So Hell she's yeah. doing a great job. Dude, this so, family's well, solid as fuck so far. I know I'm joking and, about it. I'm just trying yeah, to laugh through the torture scenes. You know? For sure. Yeah, because that's, <laughs> yeah. that's pretty bad. So after the birth of their second son, they moved southeast to southeast Kansas to keep... Yeah. Uh, Dr. William York's practice and okay. to get away from the memories of the war, obviously. So he's yeah. just like, I'm getting away from from where we were. It's time to go start a new life. Well, on March 9th, 1973, Dr. William York left his brother's house going to his home in Independence, Kansas. So he's like, I'm I'm heading out. You know, our friend has just been has been missing. So I'm just going to go ahead and go take a look, go see if I can find him, right? Yeah. Um, he's He hasn't sent me a letter or anything like that, so I'm just going to go look. Yeah. Well, a few days before this, he had read in a paper that investigators, well, <laughs> the Vigilance Committee, the Vigilante Committee members 
had found a wagon that looked an awful like awful lot like the one he sold George Longcourt. <laughs> George Longcourt's wagon painted on the side there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks familiar. <laughs> Wait, I, I think check I the wheels. That. that shit squeaky. Squeaky as hell. God damn it, we've got a murderer. <laughs> we've got a murderer. Well, they also found clothes in it that belonged to a man and a little girl. Okay. So, yeah, which yeah. is, you know, we look at George Longcourt and his, no, his it was daughter. a Catholic priest, okay? Exactly, okay. exactly. Okay. So William decided that, well, just like most all of us true crime buffs and maniacs out there, so many. all of us internet sleuths and detectives, he was going to try and investigate the disappearance of his friend himself. So he went to ye olde Wikipedia. Yeah, he yeah, went to quest. Wikipedia. Yep, just to start. Well, on March 9th, he said goodbye to his wife and kids and kissed her one last time. Mm. Mary and the kids watched him disappear into the sun. So they're just waving at him like, bye, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> Where'd he go? He's off to Wikipedia. He's off to Wikipedia, Kansas. So as he reached Moorhead, Kansas, which the wagon was stationed, so the wagon that was, you know, held George's friend, to see if mm-hmm. anyone would be able to identify it. Mm-hmm. He obviously was devastated that it was the one he had sold to George. Was this the equivalent of like coming down to like the like the the fucking morgue to like identify a body back in the day? There's like, damn it, that is Bob's wagon. Yeah, and and Shit. because most of the time they wouldn't be able to find bodies. If yeah, they couldn't find the body. They tried to identify stuff that belonged to them. Yeah, you know, so that makes sense. Yeah, it, yeah, it makes sense. And eventually, we'll see what happens. Just like picture a morgue. They're just like pulling out these chests out of a cold morgue, and they're like, "Is this his wagon?" Yes, it's mm-hmm. his fucking wagon. I remember yeah. when I put that S from high school on the side. Mm, I know, <laughs> in the heart. Oh, uh, yeah. So. William right. York again decided that he would be one of the people to find answers, you know? So Doing he arrived. Vigilantes. Yeah, he arrived in Fort Scott to stay at his father's house, which his father's house was, was a little bit closer to Cherryville, which is where his okay. friend went missing. So he's like, cool, I'm going to hang out with my father for a bit. And so he stayed there for four days. He he said, okay, I'm going to plan out how we investigate this. Mm-hmm. and I But I don't want to alert anybody, the perpetrators, of that I'm looking into this because I want it to keep happening. I don't want, you know, I don't want somebody to be like, cool, I'll stop and then leave. So he's like, mm. I got to be quiet about my my questions. So on his last day there, he bought a new horse. Mm. So, and you know, this guy has money. He's an ex-senator. He's an ex-military veteran. And he's also now a doctor. So this yeah. guy has a lot of money. So that one that could help him get all the places he needed to go without delay. Mm. So William York smartly decided that he should notify the sheriff, though, that he oh? was investigating oh, it no. because his dad told him to. That was, uh, now it's probably, well, it should be common fucking sense, but at the time, that was groundbreaking. Yeah, like the dad was like, no, I think that if you're looking for murderers, you should probably <laughs> tell the sheriff <laughs> you that know you're how, going to do that. <laughs> you know how you're going to be sneaking around all the sites that are being investigated? Yep. Maybe you should let them know ahead of time before they just catch you sneaking around all the sites that they're investigating. Yeah. I gotcha. think of it the other way. I'm like, if he goes missing. Oh, true. Somebody knows, you know, like, yeah. and especially the sheriff, somebody that can go look for these people. Yeah. And the sheriff's so, got a great track record of finding the solution. So, like, I think that's a great idea. Exactly. You know, like, well, at least unless someone knows. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, William, while he was making his way on the roads, he questioned most people. Honestly, mm. most people were eager to talk. But nobody knew anything. So like <laughs> he's just like they're just like, How you doing? My name's William York. Mm. I'm just coming around here looking around for people, just asking some questions. Like, have you seen my have you seen my friend? He came through here and they're just like, I haven't seen your friend, but I did see this one girl in church this <laughs> one time with those ankles. God, I think of that day every day. Every minute of God every damn I... day. <laughs> Those foot canyons, those. I was looking at those arches. Those Ooh. arches go all the way up to her back. Mm. So you're saying Anyways, she had what were your question? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, what was your question? Um, I'm I'm good. You you have a good day, sir. <laughs> so he's made his way following the trail that he thought George and Marianne had taken. Okay. So well, we're gonna jump a little ahead here first because I. I kind of want to just 
jump a little bit ahead. I was picturing the whole time that he was going to start using fake names. You let me know when he's ready to do that, because I know he's going to. He better yeah, use we're, fake names. We're going to jump ahead of the old um, investigation to other things. Please so give me we'll the jump jo- back to him. Please a give later. me the Tom York joke. Like he's like, my name's Tom. I'm a I'm a creep. I'm a, a weirdo. What the hell am I doing here? I I don't belong here. You know, he was a military <laughs> veteran and a politician. I don't know if he was ever labeled a good singer. So I don't know if he got there yet. But I think he was working on an album before he left. So he I, just didn't get to the point. I'm convinced that he that could this, put out an album. I'm convinced the story ends with his family lineage going back to England, and which I'm just gonna assume his family's from. And then like Seems that's like it, yeah. The, yeah, and like Tom York. You know, that's how we get Tom York. Yeah, I think so. I'm just going to say. As long as it's not spelled T-H-O-M. It is. But he's the only one that's okay. I guess so. We'll yeah. we'll decide about that later. Okay. Um, we'll fight off there. Enough um, enough, so, enough going off trail. We're going to catch dysentery if we keep going this way. We need to get yeah, back on trail. Yeah, we need to get back on the trail. That's right. So we're jumping forward here a few days. Okay. No word or tale was ever heard from William York again. Oh, shit. So we're going to hop over that. And we'll come back to him a little later. Okay. So William's brother, Alexander, he had two brothers, okay? So William's brother, Alexander, visited their father. He was pretty worried because, obviously, his brother was missing. And so he hasn't heard from him three to four days, um, almost a week. Okay. And so, obviously, who wouldn't be, you know? Yeah. Both Alexander and their father went to the same sheriff Mm. that he talked to and said, hey, William's missing. So the word was out now. People were searching for William York. The sheriff, Mary York, Alexander York, and William's other younger brother, Edward York. I hope it they was had just themselves a Gebhardt. little family posse. I hope it was just Gebhardt with a mustache playing as the sheriff. <laughs> oh, that would be hilarious. <laughs> and yeah, I didn't see him, but um, I heard that they had great rates this week at the Bender Out, if you want to come by. <laughs> As it comes, stay, yeah. Well... It was around this time that the benders started to sour a bit more in the eyes of the town. Oh, I mean, you know, the people stopped. Li- people liked them at the beginning. So I just want to say this. People did kind of like them at the beginning. Obviously, okay. Kate was a big hit in this town. Yeah, that can Kate do a lot. was a huge hit. Yeah. And pa Bender, people thought was fine. You know, they're just yeah. like, he's okay. Yeah. Get part. He's simple, but he can quote some Bibles. He can quote them Bibles, you know, the Bible verses. And so he just... <laughs> The people like them, yeah. but one incident around this time started pushing the town to turn on them. Mm-hmm. Kate would do what she does best. She was a medium, you know? She okay. like, re- like we talked earlier in spiritualism, she was the medium and she was doing seances. Okay. And she could connect dead people with their deceased loved ones, which at this time, freaking booming business. <laughs> you yeah, know? Like, there yeah. happened to have been a lot of deceased loved ones in a concentrated area at this time. Yep. Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah, hey, and and worldly, like five years ago, we're talking about six years ago, we're talking yeah. about civil war. So, yeah, in spring, there are a lot of wildfires in Kansas. So basically, really? they burn a lot of the low brush away, and instead, yeah, yeah, during this time, instead of okay. letting it happen, yeah, one of their neighbors named John Dinkst was killed trying to fight the fires. So a lot I'm of this, get you. <laughs> yeah, sorry, you know, <laughs> he's just trying to he's trying to fight the fires. At this time, I just think they were carrying buckets, throwing some water on it, or 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 cutting. She or trying to, to put cut. water in it again. Sorry, I yeah. shouldn't make fun of him. No, no this poor guy because he had a family. It was really oh, sad. Oh fuck! So he basically inhaled all the smoke while he was fighting and went unconscious and just never woke up again. <laughs> and if I can pull it a heartstring here, and oh, sadly well. Betsa Bay's not here. To, to hear this too just like last episode with the Taylor Swift talk darn you or was that the one before I think that was last episode was last well, one. that was the last one yeah well just kind of like Jack Pearson uh, from our favorite show This Is Us so let's give a moment of silence for Jack and John Dietz well so Kate saw dollar signs okay so as she charged for seances and it's for well I guess I can say in quotations, consoling, wink, wink. <laughs> yeah. I mean, low-key, though, they kind of were like therapists back in the day. 
Oh, for sure. Like their con also, artistry pushed the emotional limits to the point of like they're saying you need to go on with your life. They yeah. still want to talk to you because you know they still need a little bit more. They need to make that like, mula, they yeah. still want to talk to you. But they're saying they want you to be happy. They want you to blah blah blah, and they also want to check in next month. Um, <laughs> this episode is not brought to you by Better Health. Yes, Better Health. Yep. <laughs> So she rode up to the dean's house to meet John's mother okay. and mother-in-law who both lived there. Henrietta was John's mother, and she had no intention of letting Kate take advantage of them. You know, she was very worried. She's just like, I don't believe in a lot of this stuff. I, I think Kate is like a, she she thought Kate was Charlatan. like this horrible person, charlatan, yeah. and she knew that she's coming up here to try to take advantage of uh, the mother-in-law, who actually was like, Way more distressed about the death. So she than was like, Henrietta basically was. had a high school education compared to the rest of the town. It was just like, this person's a piece of shit. Yeah, yeah. She just <laughs> knew that Kate yeah. was not genuine in her yeah. feelings for this. So, okay. As Kate rode up and dismounted, she walked up to them. Delilah, who was John's mother in law, took the kids in the house because Henrietta was like, Delilah, take the kids in the house. Just go in there, hang out for a minute. She just and threw Henrietta, her cell phone down into the grass, like fucking ready to go. Yeah, like, she was on. like, she was like, like hawked up. She was ready to go. Damn. So she walked right past Kate without saying a word. Damn. Grabbed the reins of Kate's horse. What? Kate's horse. And then motioned to Kate to get back on and get the fuck out. Oh, that's like. Yeah. That is the that is literally the equivalent of like somebody just got out of the car and you just walk by, grab their keys, open their door, and they're just holding them up like, "Come on, come yep. on, get the fuck back in, go, get out of yep. here, damn, yep. get on out." That's another so, level of cold, dude. <laughs> she's awesome <laughs> because so she just old. they stared at it. each other for a while too. Ooh. They just stared, and you could feel it. And then I can still until feel it. all compassion left Kate's face, yeah. and her demeanor changed, knowing she was. Oh, fucking ankles Kate, turned red. Yeah, Kate jumped right onto the horse, Ooh. and she was turning to go off. And Henrietta said to mm -hmm. her, like almost yelled to her, mm -hmm. "The Deeds family, living and dead, have no need for your services." Ooh. And she was not to contact any of them again. She was get the fuck out of here. Neither me, Help. John, or or uh, Delilah need any of you. So, Help. yeah, she's like, get the fuck out of here. Seeing right through the disguise. Yeah. Henrietta would continue to spread the word around town afterwards that the Benders, and especially Kate, were not good people, so and she would reject them whenever they could. Damn, so she started the vibe. She started the vibe. She was Damn. the one to be like, let's sour on them because I know something's up with them. I know they're charlatans. They come in here and take an advantage. The sheriff. <laughs> Yeah, I, what did I do? <laughs> Mustache I did falling nothing. off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> running away. He's just like walking yeah. away. Oont, oont. I bet they get to the out. Familiar. In. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now, with that story told, the one to go into the background because they just, the, you know, they they it, they were getting cold. To the town was getting cold to them, and people yeah. were starting to suspect them because mm -hmm. I mean they were. They'd been there for about it, a, uh, two years, two three years almost. So. Everybody that goes near them goes missing. Is yeah, that, is that why? <laughs> yeah, and I mean, people weren't connecting it at this time, but people okay. were starting to start, yeah, start starting understanding. To talk. Yeah, starting to talk. Okay. With that story told, Alexander and Edward York had both got together about anywhere from sixty-five to a hundred men, which is a lot of people in this day Jesus. to search for to search for William. That's like six so, towns back then. Yeah, it's a lot of people. Yeah. Edward had also brought with him a detective from Independence, Kansas. See? And I just want to say, this guy, good dude. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. For the most part, it was easy to trace William York's trail as everyone pointed to Lador, Kansas. It, it wasn't that hard to find this guy <laughs> <Okay>. at first. <laughs> well, as they were in town in Lador, Kansas, yeah. Edward York got drunk during the afternoon and uh -huh. said the man that owned the tavern, named James Roach, great name to own a tavern. Fucking awesome. Was He's the, the club murderer. owner of that time. Yeah, yeah. literally. He, My name's the, James Roach. Ed, Edward sit, like, pointed at him, and he was drunk as fuck, just being uh -huh. like, my brother's dead, uh, my brother's missing, I think you're the one who took him and killed him. So I think uh -huh. at this point they're thinking he's dead, but they don't know, obviously. you as a, as a family member, you don't, you know, that happens to you, you're never thinking they're dead. But you, you have feelings, you know, and I think yeah. that 
He's just like, you did it. It's your fault. So Mm -hmm. he had a few, James Roach had a few coincidences of business partners going missing and also people who owed Roach money. So this is why they started being like, okay, we think maybe this is you. And this is after they question people in town. So they're kind of putting these little things together. But his brother, Alexander, who was the older one, questioned Roach. And eventually he was just like, uh, okay, like I, I don't think you killed William. But I do think you might be guilty of the other murders or the other people going missing. Okay. He's like, I, I can't say anything. So he's like, it, you know, it's not my, I'm not looking for those people. I'm sorry that that happened. I'm not looking for those people. I'm looking for my brother. Yeah. So again, the detective was about to be worth his weight in gold. He was just like walking downtown, just kind of looking around, just like, you know, poking around and, and, uh, a, a, Literally just walking around I taking did, notes. I did, I did literally just picture him poking. <laughs> like, yeah, like poking a door, poking some wood, you know, poking nice people angles. that walk by. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, while he was doing that, a random boy walked up to him and told him, I saw a horse that was on its way heading to Independence. Oh. I remembered it because I liked his horse. And <laughs> he ended up saying it was the horse that William was riding. So that was the go ahead. The detective said, okay, I'm going to start canvassing the area where I heard two bodies were found about a year earlier. So Drum Creek, remember in, mm-hmm. uh, about a year earlier, those two bodies were randomly found by those boys in Drum Creek. Yeah. He's like, okay, now it's time to go start searching there because we might be at the end where we might find some bo- a body. So I just, I just love that at one point in history, it was an actual serious statement where he's like, I got to go talk to a guy about a horse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, mister. I really fucking loved it. It was crazy, though, because, like, the other day, this really beautiful horse I saw that was leaving towards Drum Creek, it was, um, uh, yeah, the horse was riding the guy, and they just went down <laughs> the road together. He's like, yeah, yeah. God damn it, I'm going to drum. Yeah. Well, instead of actually being like, I got to go take a piss, you're like, I got to go actually talk about a horse. I just picture little kids. I, I picture him as a newsboy. He's a newsie. You know, this little yeah, kid literally. like running up to him. Like, I, why else would he be on the streets extra, in the extra. Wild West, in the downtown right? area composed of literally three buildings? You know, right? like, yeah. he just <laughs> runs up to him as he's taking a leak behind the bar that everybody knows club owner Roach is the murderer for. And he's just trying to, like, eavesdrop through the doors. He's poking at holes in the wall. You know, yeah, like literally. Then, yep. Hi, Miss Thor. Did you hear about my favorite horse? He's like, I, well, I didn't. I was just, uh, um, yeah, you probably shouldn't be over here. Okay. No, it's okay. I hang out at the Catholic Church. Anyway, so <laughs> I saw this guy being ridden on by a horse, a beautiful horse. Let me tell you, yeah, beautiful yeah. horse I've ever seen. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, okay. I'm here. I'm here, Joey. I'm here with it. So while they're, while they're going out to Drum Creek, well, before, mm-hmm. the detective was like, you know what? We should probably hire a local guide, somebody who knows the area. I like how they act like they're Obviously. going into the Amazon. <laughs> well, I mean, they're going out to nowhere, and they're also going on people's land. Yeah, So they that want is true. somebody who's that from the area that can be like, hey, that hey won't guys, get shot knows at the family. That won't get shot out first, yeah. Yeah. So okay, the man's name, who would, who would go through this whole the whole rest of the story, is named Leroy Dick. Go ahead, Gil. I got nothing. Well, <laughs> the very name surprising. Like that, I don't need a joke. <laughs> yeah, you don't know. No, the Dick's already okay. the joke. So. Okay. okay. Well, Dick led the detective and the Yorks to Henrietta Dean's house. Well, as you can imagine, Henrietta pointed the finger squarely at our friend Kate Bender. Yeah. So the detective had made several notes in his book about Kate already, as most of the town had something to say about Long her. Of course they did, right? Curvature. Yeah, they were describing some supple, pale. They surrounded. were going very penthouse on it, I think. <laughs> well, I think at this time it was called Pent Shack. I don't know, it was something like yeah. that. But Pent so pen he, out. He Pent Out, yeah. So yeah. he scribbled down one piece that was interesting from her flyers that she put around town. And her flyer said thus. Professor Miss Katie Bender can heal all sorts of diseases, cure blindness, fits, deafness, and all such diseases. Also, death and dumbness. 
also diseases. And like the logo was literally just a single, like just like a single index finger pulling up, just like creasing the part of her long dress, like showing just enough of an- that ankle cleavage, that real good mm-hmm. ankle cleavage. Like, that was her fucking logo. And the fact that she put in Miss in there, oh, <laughs> oh, that was, a, that was a dog whistle. So the six men in town who could read, damn. Yeah, I know. And then she just had two of her fingers in a circle Woo! and uh, three fingers out, and, you know, she'd punch you every time you look at it. Some guy would come out and just knock you in the face <laughs> like every the time circle you looked game? at it. <laughs> Yeah, I had to play the circle game. God damn it. <laughs> All right, well, so Miss Bender out here doing things. Yeah, well, the Benders having an unfound robbery charge against them. So they, and people generally not liking them more in a town. How do you have an unfound robbery charge? One of the, what does so, that mean? so explain in, in 1871, mm-hmm. they had one of the people that came and stayed with them. Okay. Well, they ended up taking his stuff. Honestly, well, and and oh, go ahead, sorry. Well, they ended up taking his stuff, and basically, the guy ended up leaving and coming back, and they were like, "No, we didn't see your stuff. It's gone. It was a, uh, um, mean? it was gone." And they're like, "It was the <laughs> horse riders must have come in and taken it. The bandits must have come in and taken it." And they literally didn't get charged for this because the guy was just like, "Well, you guys were here. I left." And they're like, no, we weren't here. We left too. We walked out, and then must have been one of the ra- <laughs> the bandits that was that came in and took it. And so, like, that was the unfound charge that okay. they basically stole it, but they could they didn't have enough evidence to like be like they did it. So yeah. it was kind of like in the gotcha. air. People were like, eh, we kind of know that they did it, maybe, but maybe they didn't. I don't know. Like, it was yeah, just a bunch of okay. people okay. blaming them, you know, and they were just kind of like, no. And some people were like, well, he was a drunkard, so he probably lost his stuff. And, it, like, you know, they have the, the scuttlebutt around town. Yeah, okay, that made sense, because that was, like, an unfound <laughs> charge. I'm like, how do you get found for something that's unfound? Like, mm, that did, exactly. that's what didn't make sense. Okay, this, this, no, makes this sense, tracks, yeah. this tracks, okay. Well, well, most people in town didn't like them anymore, so they were kind of yeah. going, I mean, honestly, except for the an- ankle-watching men of the town. Which the was blame- the, the incredibly, you know, just a bit, it was a vast majority of this town were really into ankles, not feet. No, feet, everybody's seen feet. Ankles, and to be though. fair, it was it was the men saying, Oh, like looking at it being like, No, the benders are right, but then their their wives of this town of this time were just being like, The benders are terrible and the guy's like, Oh yeah, yeah. The benders are the worst trash of a Yes, ma'am. Yes, <laughs> ma'am. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah well, awful. So yeah, do you see the way those ankles bend? Ha, huh? no. <laughs> no, I love the way your ankles bend, pig leg Sally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah. and obviously the you know, everyone around town's starting to be like, Okay, these people are a little funny. So on April fourth, eighteen seventy three, Alexander decided it's time to head out to the Bender's house to question them about Ooh. when William's disappearance. This is the boss so, fight. It is. Okay. So the detective and Alexander set out and reached the cabin. They sent Edward and some of the other men to stay behind and drag Drum Creek to see if they maybe find a body or something. So, so they, were the to, were they were trying to trying to dredge it. They were trying to drag yeah. it. Like, how, what was that process like? Like how many coats? Well, they were throwing were they... nets in there. They were throwing <laughs> nets in there like <laughs> I normal. Just, I did picture that as very inefficient. It was just like, Hoo! and it's just like 40 feet away from the end of the shoreline. The and they're like, yeah, nothing. <laughs> yeah, and, and they're just kind of, they're just tossing nets in there, dragging it. They have like you okay. know said sixty five to hundred people, so a good amount of okay. people. Most of those people went a lot to of drum people coat hangers. Okay, and yeah. Alexander also and the detective both decided because Edward was usually getting drunk and <laughs> yeah. and like pretty pretty prone to anger quickly. Obviously, he's in yeah. a mental state because he loved his brother and yeah. he was closer to his brother. But Alexander was older. He was more well put together. He was like, we we can't scare them off. Obviously, like if we find out they did it, mm-hmm. we can't just kill them. Like we, you know, it's like one part of it. He, we have to go through the legal part of it. So okay. Alexander noted that the apple orchard was very well kept, mm. and the topsoil was raked and what looked like earlier in the day. Oh, so, so they, were they were just yeah. So they were just like, okay, cool. And and Alexander. Being, he was very well educated as well because he was also a senator at this time. Yeah. And and military officer. So he was a colonel, actually. 
Okay. So he's kind of looking there and like, okay, I, th- I see that. Let's just go talk to them. You just made me realize like at that time, sorry, I'm going off on another tangent. I'm full of them today. Um, like you could run for office just by casually introducing a new word through a, like a thesaurus to people. Yep. Like you yep. just be like, I'm smart casting. And they're just like, well, you know, I like that John Roberts. That John Roberts, you know, he's out here smart casting the words. And he's like, you all as citizens diver- deserve to smart cast when you think about your politicians. And like, nobody knows what smart cast means. And frankly, I just made it up. But y'all are voting for me now. Like that shit used to work. You could just make one word. Yep. Like, you didn't need a slogan. You could just be like one fucking word, smart cast. And then they were just yep. like, Damn it, I want a smart cast. Like, ah, oh, dude, that's yeah. such a fun time, man. You just Alexander Smart Cast York. You know, God. that's how he got his name. Damn it. That's yeah. crazy. You got the men's time to smart cast. And you're just like, damn it. <laughs> like yep. it was such a good time for marketing. Yeah, I know. It's it's one word. Genius marketing. Yep. Yeah. Well, after mm-hmm. they saw the, you know, apple orchard topsoil was raked and until the earlier in the day, they knocked on the door of the cabin. And then they let themselves in because apparently nobody was there. I mean, it was an inn still, you know, so like obviously makes it you could your still own house in. back in the day. Yep. If nobody's home to answer when you knock, it's yours. Yeah. Pretty, pretty hey, finders keepers. You I know? mean, that's what the Europeans did to like native folks here. So it's like I, and that rule had to apply to other They Europeans, didn't even right? have doors to knock on. So that's why it was just easy yeah, for them the to te- come right in. You can't yeah. hear, but I'm I'm knocking on the studio padding. Right now, that's what it sounds like. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, they're on the on the skin uh, teepees that they had. They were just like, yeah, or longhouse. Well, the longhouses yeah. did actually have. True. Yeah. Yeah. Which was a majority yeah. of the area. Anyways, we're getting too much into that. Let's yeah, we're getting too to much into this part too. Yeah, let's bend yeah, back the benders. Yeah. Okay. Time to get back. Um, bend it like Alexander. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> Alexander introduced himself as the brother of William York and said, "Okay, I wish to find out whether he is dead or alive." Mm. Which he kind of just was like, cool, let's just lay it out on the table. Okay. And he was reading them too. So it was a kind of like, he. the detective sat like next to uh, Alexander. He was watching the family because Kate, you know, was like, hey, Watch come reactions. in, let's talk kind about it. in the room. Yeah. Which detectives, this detective was very good at. So the detective sat and watched Kate's demeanor as they talked. Specifically her ankle twitches. Right? Yeah. It was twitching every time they said William. Um, and at that moment, and they had like maybe 10, 15 minutes worth of talking, okay. Gebhardt kind of bursts into the house. Not really like slamming the door, but kind Just of being like- Kramer like from like Kram- <laughs> Yeah, Kram- he Kramer's into the door. <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> and okay. just like Kramer, without even a question, he admitted- I got a hot tub. Yeah, he's like, I got shot at where they found the body. Near oh. Christmas. Oh. Yeah, so like he wasn't even asked this question, and he like bursts in with this uh, this alibi. <laughs> and so everyone's kind of- <laughs> So Alexander and the detective are just kind of like looking at each other like Seinf- <laughs> like Jerry Seinfeld and uh, George Costanza, like, what? And so- That doesn't even make sense. <laughs> yeah, they're like, doesn't even make sense. It's a show about well... nothing. So, <laughs> okay. and then yep. Elaine going like, well, so Alexander- Alexander's like, okay, let's let's just go with this guy to check it out. Right? Okay. Yeah, they're but <laughs> Yeah. So as they walked out, Kate grabbed Alexander's arm and said, Well, if you come back next week without your man, I'll have an answer. Wink. Ooh. And Alexander was like, Sploosh. Uh, excuse me? He removed her hand coldly oh. and declined her offer. <laughs> then then grabbed yeah. the reins of her horse and handed it to yeah, her. Yeah, and handed it to her, yeah. <laughs> but this is my house. <laughs> like, yeah. Go. Get <laughs> out. Come. Yeah. Go, you, you are. <laughs> he, <laughs> people like that don't like her don't <laughs> like her. It's like yeah. one of those things where they're just oh. like, we cannot stand you. It's either 100% seduction <laughs> or get the fuck away from you. Like, there's no middle line. Yeah, there's no middle gotcha. ground with her. Okay. So when they got to the creek, okay. Gebhardt did a weird act out of how he got shot at in his weird little way. 
<laughs> laughing with a hyena like laugh. I'm pretty sure we have an exact copy of that transcript here. All right. Let's... I think this is the real audio, actually. Yeah, shit. I, I have been restoring this. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, poke, poke, hen, hen. This might be. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Let's see. What uh, what did Gephardt say? Well, I was here, and I I saw some people over there, and, and well, I was over there, and the shot came from there. Whoosh! And the bullet went right into the tree, right into it. And I said, oh, no, that's not good. Nine, 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 nine. And I definitely did not laugh. Like, <laughs> Also, I wanted to give a shout out to the Bender Out and Girl Cry Horsefly Boutique. Now accepting Groupons and reservations via Expedia. Do not forget to rate and review because as you know what we say, and when you don't rate and review, we will find you. <laughs> yeah, we actually uh, we actually made that nice and clear. Thank you, Gil, for doing the AI I, restore- restoration software. Yeah, I'm doing my best over here. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. That's also a hint hint for future Wild. things as well. Yeah, wild times. So, well, after this visit, Alexander, who is, as I said, a senator, wrote a petition and sent it to the governor of Kansas. We need to close he this was, out. Yeah, yeah. He's like, we need to close this place. You know, he just wrote a letter to Kansas basically saying a reward should be offered for the apprehension of an organized band of outlaws who were spreading in many localities. Specifically Lawlessness... from this one address. Sorry. Yeah, Sorry. yeah exactly. <laughs> like... Well, well, he's trying to make it legal now. Yeah. Because at the beginning, nobody's looking for anybody. Yeah. So, again, continuing, uh, yeah, yes. lawlessness in southeast Kansas had reached the point where it rendered life and property unsafe, and it was not good enough that the state authorities had not yet intervened. He is making, he is, this guy is a senator. He knows how to get things done. He knows where to go to get people to start looking into this. So within days of receiving the letter, the governor set out a reward, finally, for anybody that was missing. Okay. So $500 per head, whoever was involved in the disappearances and murders. Alexander also offered an extra hundred dollars of his own money to add to the reward. So you're basically getting six hundred dollars per person of who was a murderer or who was killed or who was at you know at the point of these disappearances. Okay. Right? So like we can honestly say, a few days later, finally people start doing stuff. Leroy Dick, our friend, got together a vigilance committee so that they could go form a bigger search party. Leroy told everyone that illegal state authorities were coming to search all the properties and question everyone because of the governor's uh, decree that he just set out for the reward. A few of the townspeople volunteered their homestead to be searched because they're like, hey, we didn't do it. We know we didn't do it. One yeah. of the people that just said perfect that perfect circle around the Bender's house. <laughs> we literally, yeah. Because everyone's like, look, we want you to find these people. We're we're getting Why it's looking bad on us too. Out. Yeah. <laughs> look look on the map. That map right there, you can see that hundred sixty acre place. Above the ankles. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the people one of the first people that volunteered was a man named R.M. Bennett. If you remember him from the first episode, that was the one that got accused for the first two murders at the beginning. <laughs> he was doing his best version of Shaggy. It wasn't me, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that one too. Okay. <laughs> well, as they searched, they found an abandoned wagon. On his it was property? Cake- no, no, as they okay, searched the whole like, town. Damn, sorry. Fucked up. They okay. searched the whole gotcha. towns and they found uh an abandoned wagon. It was caked in filth yeah. and had two odd dished back wheels that looked almost broken. Winter loving flies swarming mm-hmm. around it, bed bugs inside of wooden yes. pallets, a bunch of posters for psychical observations, research, ankle viewings, all sorts of crazy things were in this wagon. Okay. Yep. I'm here. I'm well, here. They searched, they dragged the wagon from the ravine and then noted down what they found inside. Fish. They found a (laughs) double barrel shotgun. Yeah. And one of the things that you will all remember a wooden plank that said grow cries on one side. (laughs) (laughs) And on the other, yes. And on the other side, in neater handwriting, they found. 
in neater handwriting on the other side of that sign, it said groceries. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Jesus Christ. The one thing. Well, I do want to say, at that moment, the people who found it did not even know what this meant or that it was actually what evidence. What kind of ancient hieroglyphics is this? Yes, literally. Yeah, they, they were just like, it's fine, whatever. Oh, my God. So, because I want to say, because oh, these are a lot of, hilarious. like, authorities, like, federal authorities as well. So, like, they're mixed into these looking at and they're not up to date with the uh, Grow Cry <laughs> store that they found. So... Okay. Skipping ahead a little bit, it's now May. Please don't. Let's go back. <laughs> we got to skip you, ahead in the story. I had no clue that was coming up in the screen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So yeah. go ahead. Okay. Good. Yeah. Right. yeah good, I'm, good. I'm, I'm, I'm good. back on. Good laugh I'm back on the wagon rail. All right. All right so, go. back on trail, a little bit ahead of time. It is now May, and spring weather's come, so it was easier for investigators to get around and. Well, on Sunday, May 4th, 1883, a neighbor named Billy Toll ended up riding by the Bender's cabin. And so he's just like, okay, he's a neighbor and just rides by. He noticed there's some dead cattle near the stable because, yeah, we want to say there's just a bunch of dead cattle around. They had a lot of areas. I also just picture like 18 (laughs) wagons like stacked up like a junkyard right next to their like Benda's out and Grow Cry still are just like signed with an arrow flashing. And he's just like, this is a little sus. (laughs) Bender salvage. (laughs) (laughs) Benda's junkyard. (laughs) Junkyard, yeah. I can't smell. Well, he went into the stable because he started this hor- smelled this horrible smell, and Damn. found a one dead calf and a barely half alive calf. Aww. So that one calf. So he's like, "Oh man, this is, this is terrible." So he Veal. feeds the calf. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. He feeds <laughs> the calf, and he's like, "Okay," he starts taking care of it. Kind of nurses it back a little bit. Poor little Shit. calf. Kind of ends up Aww. being all right, but the you know obviously most of the other were dead, and there was only one cat. There was well, there was more cat. There was more. Uh, cows there but the calf was all right so mm-hmm. well he was about to go into the house but then he just was like as eh, this smells bad i don't i don't think i'm gonna go in here <laughs> and he was also a superstitious guy too so this guy was very superstitious he mm-hmm. he came he went into the house and was like ah, i don't think it's right if mm-hmm. i go in their house alone and maybe they're there maybe they're not i don't yeah. know i don't feel right maybe, maybe they're aware of here. this apocalypse of dead starving cattle around them yeah mm-hmm. yeah yeah so he just is like cool i'm i'm good so yeah, good he he eventually went and was like, okay, cool. I got to go tell somebody though. So he he left and he told Leroy Dick and a few other people because he was like, hey, like there's n- I don't think anybody's here. So told them said, okay, cool. Leroy Dick's like, okay, let's let's go check the house out. He did at first before he told Leroy Dick. He told two. Uh, real estate agents that he found. They were just like literally walking around <laughs> and the real estate agents... Real estate? Get your real estate. Yeah. They went into the house, looked around, and they were kind of like looking to buy property This and is stuff, definitely real know. estate. Yeah, it was very weird. And then they <laughs> left. Okay. They left and like they didn't really touch anything or do anything. They just kind of looked around and left. Mm, but and so the guy didn't go in. Went and told Leroy. Old Leroy. And uh, Leroy Dick was like, okay, cool. Like, let's go take a look at this house. And so he suspected that Alexander York's visit made the benders leave. But he oh. didn't necessarily think it was because they were guilty. He was like, well, they're kind of coming through just like saying, okay, maybe they're guilty. And kind of like any, anyone would be like, well, if they think we killed all these people, why should we stay? You know, like we're not making that much money. Yeah. We're not doing well here. So let's leave. So, well, on Monday, May 5th, 1873, Leroy Dick arrived at the Bender's homestead. Cinco de Mayo. Mm. He halted right outside the cabin. It was the smell of death that stopped him, and he knew it. Because Leroy Dick was a veteran of the Civil War. Okay. He knew what death smelled like. So yeah. he started searching around the house. Well, He also noted that inside the stable, he found many piles of new unearthed dirt. Oh, so 
Yeah. Maybe they're starting a garden. Okay. Now, maybe, yeah, inside yeah. the stable. So yeah. Dick then went inside the cabin and noted again, but even worse, a horrible smell. Okay. Yeah. So he's searching around, just looking everywhere. He went into the back of the house past the wagon canvas. As we all know, they use that huge wagon canvas yeah, to, to have the great basically reveal. separate the Yeah, for the great reveal to During separate every the two seance, they were like, oh, 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 it's all. and then just like pull yep. them back in there. And they're all standing yeah, there and yeah. then everybody's running out of the house and it becomes the hills have eyes real quick. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Well, he noticed a small leather strap protruding out from under one of the beds. Taking this yeah, home from right? my wife. It went to the trap door. Yeah, it went to the trap door down to the cellar. Oh, so he strap. obviously picked it up. Yeah. He climbed down into the cellar. <laughs> Again, hordes of flies came out of the cellar. Hordes of them. And just horrible smell got even stronger as he went down there okay but as he searched around again he found no body Mm. so as he climbed back out you know obviously like i know people died here yeah he's searching around looking around the kitchen area and he ends up looking under the stove but it wasn't too conspicuous like he Mm. it wasn't like they put it in the stove or like had a secret drawer. It was just Arm literally like, out. yeah, it was just like really just kind of hanging out almost underneath the stove. Okay. He found three hammers. Oh. Yeah. Hey? The first was a three inch claw hammer. That's, Ooh. you know, kind of a normal hammer that we use to hammer in nails nowadays. <laughs> the second, another hammer. That was just a little bit longer with another elongated head, so just a little bit bigger of a hammer. Okay. And the third was a homemade sledgehammer weighing about five pounds. Damn. So basically, he just made this hammer for things that they needed to bash. Okay. Yeah. So none of that's out of the ordinary back then, by the way. He didn't find much. You know, obviously, he's looking around, okay, cool. Like, there's no bodies. I haven't found anything. Uh, Appears to be cool late on this, but (laughs) (laughs) it's a little bit. Licked it. <laughs> That's um Kool Aid. Kool Aid. Strawberry. Yes, Kool Aid. So no bodies. He's like, okay, well, I'm not gonna stay here. Yeah. You know, it's kind of getting towards night. No so bodies, he... no problem. Yep. So he leaves. Well, he comes back uh, the next day, May sixth. You know, on in 1883, it was time to start digging because Taste. Leroy knew there were bodies there, and he okay. saw the dirt in the stable and he's like okay i think there's some bodies around here okay he brought people back with him mm-hmm. so they had three groups of diggers how many people in one a group? yeah yeah uh three groups of diggers i think there is about five or six in each group okay. says okay 15 people not a lot of people comparatively that's a, that's to what they need. Of people but it's a good people good Half amount of the people town's to population look. okay yeah so the first group would search drum creek and they would they weren't going to dig they were just going to walk around see if there's any weirdness in the you know area yeah. if there's any bodies down there like they had already done but they're just doing a little harder so they were just fishing the second yeah yeah pretty, that's pretty much what they're doing so the second would dig out and around the stable because that's where he saw the the dirt so he's like okay yeah. like look in dig around here and the third with him would go into the cellar under the house what? so he's like cool we're all going down there because I know there's something down here the cellar dig group found the first disgustingness. Oh, no. They dug into the sides of the cellar, right? Because you can't- Oh, I can hear it. And human petrified- Oh, I can hear it. Bloody soil frothed out onto the ground as they were digging. And it just kept coming out of the ground, even though they weren't digging anymore. And they had to get up out of the cellar as it just- sludged onto the ground oh. and it, horrifying sounds what? to them and funny what? enough there was this weird guy dressed in a suit out there <laughs> doing this with just one guy and they asked this guy why he did it and he was like I don't know I always dress up for stuff <laughs> and, and, and there was no reason for it which is terrible as this disgustingness yes. is like covering yes. them this guy is like in a suit and and Obviously, Leroy Dick's like, what are you doing? You, you knew we're digging. You know we're here digging. So 
Uh, tell me his they last go, name was Bentley. We have to be related. I would be doing some uh, dumbass shit like that. It, it didn't mention the mean? guy's name. <laughs> this, but... is what, this is what I'm all about, motherfuckers. Let's go. Mm, <laughs> yeah, it definitely wasn't Bender, but it was. I have, have been a duffel Bentley. bag ready for these kinds of situations. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so okay. <laughs> after they were done digging, so they, they, they decided to they're done digging down there. And they dug for a little bit more. And honestly, they couldn't find any bodies, right? Yeah, because they were so, all a nasty fucking soup mix at this point. Yeah, yeah, okay. it was disgusting. Yeah. So at that time, the drum search party, the Drum Creek search party, returned, and they said they found no bodies, right? Because mm. they're like, okay, there's nothing down there. Like two, like a uh, about a year ago before this is like we we couldn't find any bodies in that area and the other area. That sucks so, because all we found was hormel chili. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, they found. Uh, remember the bean thing from that the bean one from the movie all those uh, everyone eating the beans yeah so Edward York was looking around the house and he was inside the house and looked in the kitchen and found the bridle of William mm. York behind a barrel that held the grow cries what was in the so, what was in the grow it was the barrel. bridle that he used for his horse yeah yeah but what was in what was in the barrel of grow cries it was just behind it. We've never, ex- yeah, I know, I know that the bridle was it behind was it. It was hard, hard goods. They what had does that like, mean? was it just like hard goods, candy dry goods, and lemon heads? Like, what was it? I think a lot of times they just had like, uh, I've been fascinated for- by their grocery list. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> that was a grow cry list. Grow but, cry uh, list, yeah. Well, because people would walk up there and they'd cry when they found out there's no groceries. Just sweet but, tarts. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Just sweet tarts, yeah. Well, it never mentioned exactly what they actually had when they started carrying stuff. I don't trust this book. Just that. Uh, it's a <laughs> good book. Okay. Well, after they found the bridle of William York, they're just like, okay, he's here. Okay. He was here. He was here at one point, and we think this is where he went missing. So he then walked the ground, Edward, right? And then noticed more freshly plowed land at the apple orchard. He also, like his brother, was very well, like, well-educated. And they all worked on farms, too, and knew, hey, that's plowed land. Mm. And they, like, took a special note of it beforehand. But he, Alexander did, and he did, too. And then he's like, okay, let's start looking over here. We didn't find him anywhere. So he grabbed a ramrod. You know, mm. a ramrod is something, you know, it depends on how you Team look at it. A ramrod, ramrod can be something you dig into the ground with, just like a big metal pole, right? Yeah. Um, it could be that, or it can be used for uh, loading a, a musket. Um, s- both of those things. That's what a ramrod is. I'm pretty sure they were using the former. They were using the former, yeah. yeah. They're, they're both names for it, but yeah, they're using yeah, the yeah. former. Anything and so- that's a rod that you use to ram. Yeah, it literally like, is what's in the name. Used yeah. to also be a name for vibrators and dildos. They were using those. Well, ladies on trains were. There's some books about it. We'll cover it well, on a future episode. They weren't using those at this moment. Another Betsy Bay free, a Bets- a Bets- a Bay absent episode. We will cover the history of ladies, dildos, and books about trains and how women can make the most of vibrations. There you I think it's fascinating. Anyways, it is fascinating. Maybe one day she'll be. She might be part of it. She. I don't know. Who knows? It'd be a best um, big exclusive. Yep. Everybody well, yeah, sign up for the Patreon. We don't have anywhere for you to go to do that, but um, not yet. So, everyone will be coming soon. Yes. And maybe going. We're not sure. Um. So he grabbed the ramrod, okay. and then in the apple orchard, pushed it into the ground and kept pushing it where there were cracks, like basically huh. where. Yeah, yeah. And so he put it down no. about four feet. Damn. And encountered resistance. Oh, okay. No. Okay. Encountered resistance. So stopped. And he just looked at everybody else and they're just like, mm. yep. That so he pulled out the rod. Yeah, he pulled out the rod. Okay. And just like you said earlier, a horrible stench flowed <laughs> out of it. <laughs> uh, well,. And then it was time to dig because they think this is where we're going to find it. So wherever Ugh. there was a disturbance in the sto- in the soil, they started to dig. Mm. And at around five feet of digging in that spot, 
they found the first body. Damn. Mm -hmm. They couldn't figure out why it had a broken ankle, but they continued. <laughs> to just... <laughs> no, but that is, damn, that is wild, though. Like, they just, like, went up there with the ram around. To tink, to tink, to tink. Because, like, I've worked on farms. I've worked on farms, like, out in North Dakota before, and mm -hmm. I've, I've used a lot of these tools, right? And I've used ramrods, especially to, like, set things up for, like, split rail fences. Like, you go in ramrod that motherfucker and then you go up with that actual like a pole like setter that like, you actually go yeah Kring! and you yep. if you're smarter than me you have earplugs in because it will fuck up your hearing it's like fo -ping, fo -ping, fo -ping. Yeah, yeah like you're hammering mm -hmm. that shit down it's super intense but yeah. like i'm gonna be honest like four and a half feet is a lot of work. They were very confident. And it was at that point when everybody's put in that much work, it had to have be it had to have been a way more awkward scene. It had to have been like a footplunu. And he's like, Footplunu? And he's just like, Well and they're all just like, Yep, yep, yep. Well, you wanna go get dinner and then we come back and finish this? Yep, yep, yep. Like yep. that was not a casual <laughs> Four and a half feet with a ramrod into a ground. That is a lot. Is a yeah. lot of work. Well, that think is about no it though, too. fucking the, joke right the, there. <laughs> but the till, but everything's already been tilled. That so the earth is a little. Matter. It, it, it helps Bro, a little bit no, because they dug no, deep. Well, hold on, hold no, on, hold on. No, hold on. no, they didn't. No, you're, you're no. sidetracking <laughs> us through this though. You're sidetracking us through this though. So I want to say it's since they dug through this already, and it's spring, the ground has thawed. It's a Side stories LPOTL at gmail.com. Tell them we're a fan of the show. Now, um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, though, but uh, contact at blackcat.report. Um, hit us up. Anybody else that actually has experience using a ramrod, just so you can actually use the type of tools to set up a split rail fence, please call up, educate both of us. Um, but I've done that. I've done that for mm -hmm. a mile and a half long fence over the course of an entire summer. Shit took fucking forever. Yeah. Four and a half feet. I don't care how good the dirt is. Yo, that is so much work because you have to think yeah. every time you press that ramrod down, the soil around the tip of that ramrod hardens. It condenses. Yeah. It, it flattens out. Four and a half feet is fucking insane. So I'm just saying at that point, I, to me, I guess to fall back to like context around this whole tangent, to me that says they were so 100% certain that there was a body right the fuck there. And this was their way of being like, well, we don't want to fuck up the land if there actually was a reason this was tilled. So we're just going to use this because in court later on, they would, we could, at that point in time, it was a historical precedent of like, we could get sued if we fuck this up. Yep, they and could. going into the yard and being like, "We just used a ramrod, officer. We didn't do anything. Judge, magistrate, you know what? Like, yeah, constable. Yeah. Like we didn't do anything. We just put a ramrod in. They're trying to say that the crops failed because we put a single rod in the ground. No, 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 yep. no. no. You and know, it was but... also for resale of the house of the land yes. too afterwards because they knew they were gone. Yeah, but I I want to get back to the story. Yeah, after yeah, that yeah, yeah. Tangent. Get back. So get back. We'll talk so, about ramrods yeah. again. Patreon. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Well, at around five feet of digging, uh -huh. they found their first body. And to much of the disgust and sadness of Alexander no. Edward, the first body they dug up was their brother, William York. His head and skull were bashed in. Oh. And his throat was slit, like they always say, from ear to ear. Ooh. Almost to where his head was sawn off. Uh. They were horrified. And it brought, yes, it brought closer to them and looking, but they now knew they are the murderers. The benders are the murderers. And yeah. so the next day, Leroy Dick came back with a few other people and they started digging into the other places where it looked like the soil was disturbed. The next grave they found was Henry McKenzie. 
And just like William, his head was bashed in and his neck was slashed. Now, I want to say the worst one of all was per the people that William York came looking for. George Longcourt and his daughter Marianne were both dug mm-hmm. up next. Damn. Longcourt had the same abrasions and laceration across the neck as the other victims they had dug up. But Marianne was found in the grave with no marks or anything on her body. She was underneath the leg of her dad. It was thought that they buried her alive. The baby was buried alive with the dad. Damn. Which is this reading that and hearing that put this story at a horrifying thing to me. Can we go back to Ramrods? Yeah, let's go talk about Ramrods again. <laughs> yeah, can we I think get that was a better side this, project. Please. Well, okay. as you can probably figure out, the methods of killing were figured out right then. Ramrods. And well, yeah, Ramrods. And well, the house was laid out perfectly for murder. It was almost like mm. they built the perfect murder inn. <gasps> this is Bates like some Motel has nothing on this. H. H. Holmes <laughs> fucking shit. Mm-hmm. God damn. Yep. They would invite people into their inn, mm. feed them like normal, and sometimes give them a seance, depending on if they were lonely looking for people what like we had talked about before. <laughs> yeah. Depending maybe on what you're into. breakfast, maybe a seance, who knows? Yep. <laughs> okay. Well, they would sit at the table. Kate would sit on the other side. And gave them their seance as they ate dinner. Okay. And while the victim was at ease or like into the seance, yeah, they would approach, bash, and bash in the person's head with the sledgehammer or claw hammer, depending Wizard on what they could Wizard of Oz grab. style, pull back the curtain, but pull it's back a the whole curtain, family yeah. of vendors. Yes, yep. bender from Futurama, all standing there, ready to bash all in the there. Heads. Yep. And then as soon as they bash their head in, they would slice their throat, Fuck. and they would pull up the trap door throw them downstairs in the cellar, close the door, and let them bleed out. Has there been a single word said, you might be getting into this, please, please, like, feel free to tell me if you are. Has there been a single word said about motivation? Because, like, one of the most confusing things about all of this is that they they were so... We'll we'll get to that. Well, they were so fucking meticulous about getting this plot of land. Yep. They were so meticulous, and then it just seems like the second they got this this pristine, you know, location, 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 this pristine plot of land, they just fucking went off the rails. Yeah, we're going to get to why okay. they did okay. what they did okay. and why they chose that. Okay. So after they did all that, you know, basically they would take the body in the wagon, remember mm-hmm. the same wagon that had the really creaky wheel on it, and Damn. they would bury them out fixed. in the apple orchard okay. <laughs> that they never fixed because they didn't. They didn't care. Well, they were definitely not meticulous about their their tools, yeah. <laughs> and their except for their murder weapons. Well, yeah, a few of the Home bodies boat. were found down in the creek, right? Yeah. So the reason for this is because obviously we should all know that in Kansas, winter is fucking cold. Yes. Yeah, I think and you the said that in the first five gets minutes. Very hard and covered in permafrost. Okay. So. Trying to dig four and a half feet, like you just went on the tangent about the ramrod. Yes. Try to dig four and a half feet, it, even in North Carolina in no, the winter. Hell no. It's hard. Hell you cannot no. do that. So instead of doing that, you know, because they're trying to mm-hmm. bury these people like quickly and in the night so nobody notices it. And yeah. they're having people come in and out of the inn quickly. So they're trying to do like quick, you know, yeah. knocking these people out. And then again, getting rid of them. Again, it's an out, not an in. But yeah. It's an out, okay. yeah. yeah. Well, they're going in, and these people are going out real it's quick. It's an in and out. So, yeah. Yeah. Just not as good food, honestly. You know, I kind of miss it. In and out's always though. giving me the shits, but let's let's continue. Me too, but their food's so good. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, as they, because it was so cold, they were just like, cool, let's, instead of doing that, let's go dump them in the in the creek. <laughs> On the bed of ice, okay. Yeah, well they, <laughs> they knocked holes in the, they knocked holes in the, the water and, and oh, slid okay. them underneath the water and they're like, we'll deal, them in, deal with them in spring yeah. and then grab them in burial. But okay. because they probably forgot about the people that were down there, and they just like kind of like, okay. more bodies by then. 
Yeah, right? So they, yeah. they kind of forgot or they just didn't get to him in time. Yeah. So, well, because of all the money and goods they stole, mm-hmm. they stole all the money and goods from Okay. Them. It was surmised that there might be an accomplice in town. Obviously, they have to fence this stuff and make money from it. Becky so, Big Shoulders appeared on the yeah. scene. <laughs> <laughs> okay. A man named Rudolph Brockman who owned a tavern, another tavern. I, I just want to make make it make sense. There are so many taverns in these stories because that's literally what most people did after I'm they got off work. going to imagine the sheer number of taverns is why it took so long to find out anything was happening because everybody was just piss poor drunk the whole time. Yep. Yeah, yeah, agreed. And and there's so many taverns, so he could have been any of them could have gone missing in any of these taverns or towns. Quick name check. So, so I have Dick, Roach, Bender, and Rudolph. Yes. Am I missing anyone? Uh not yet. No. Okay, <laughs> cool, cool. Yeah. Okay. So there is a lot of names in this story too, because there's just great names. It's a town. There's a lot of people. Yeah. But they, and they're great names. Full too. of great names. Yeah, yeah. So Rudolph Brockman. He mm-hmm. owned the tavern not too far away from the house, and he was also of German descent. Mm-hmm. And he was one of the only real true friends of, of Pa Bender. They were oh. known to talk and hang out, and, and it was, <laughs> granted, what? they were Sorry. speaking in German. What? They were speaking was, in German. I was like, what was the talking like? Because they both mail, were mail, German, mail, so mail, they mail, both mail. spoke. Yeah. It was just fucking like Boom Hauer's like great great grandpa. Y'all mind y'all dang all man y'all don't see him man they coming down the road man he was all about boom man he was all about wow man he was all dang all man y'all like, oh, how's your daughter doing? And it was, yeah, it was like, it, it was damn. pretty much like that. But they okay. spoke in German, I'm so here for they're it. both German descent. So that was the only way he could talk. So well, as you can imagine, people knowing that. The Benders did this after this mm-hmm. moment and kind of connecting like, okay, I, they were stealing things. People's stuff was gone missing. Yeah. There's got to be somebody here that's selling their stuff. You know, oh, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's Some... their, their, their fence, basically. There's somebody's getting yeah. stuff and selling to other people. Yeah, yeah. They <laughs> formed a huge posse and seized Brockman and basically oh. took him to the Benders cabin uh. in the cellar. They placed a noose around his neck, Ooh. and they were questioning him. Yep, they were just like, "Okay, this is straight did up you know Guantanamo." Them? Okay, yeah, they they said, "Screw it, we don't care." Yeah, so he kept saying, "Like I didn't know anything that was going on. I don't know anything. I didn't yeah. know that they were killing people." And so they hung him. Oh, okay. But just before he went unconscious, oh, they dropped him. Back on the ground. Okay. Let him sit there for a minute. So this guy is basically, you know, like can't talk barely. Hey. So they waited for a minute, gave him some herbs, gave him some stuff for his throat, some restoratives to, to get him back to talking. Or how Questioned candy. him again. Yeah. Hung him again. Somebody there knew what the fuck they were doing. I'm just saying yep. that was an experienced torturer. Like they did this three times. God damn. This motherfucker yep. had Three near death, well, I guess two near death experiences. Like, yep. Damn. And the last time they did it, uh-huh. they just left him lying there unconscious and left. Uh, he actually. They were real pissed. Yeah, they were pissed. He survived. What? And ended up, yeah, he survived and ended up walking, like, obviously not straight walking, but he was a. Uh, he was like lumbering back to his tavern and got there, survived, and Still eventually ready for the got five o'clock rush. Yeah, yeah, ready. Yeah, he was there. He didn't say a word, but he uh, he ran that bar. Yep. Damn. So well, sadly, this is fucked. It's it's messed up, and and the outrage is understandable. Honestly, yeah. Not that they could could hang this guy. But I understand why these people were pissed because this had just been happening under their nose for so long. And Henrietta, Henrietta Dienst, obviously was like, I fucking oh. told you so. <laughs> just you leading know, the charge. Just, just leading like, the charge. Like. And she was. She was leading the charge to find other people. So sadly, the Benders had murdered, depending on how many people you say, they dug up a bunch of bodies, a bunch yeah. of different body parts yeah. in between 11 and 50 people. Jesus Christ, that's a big number. 
They yeah. don't know correctly how many people exactly. I can say that I believe there's probably more about 20 people were yeah. killed. Um, and I think that that's more of a, a correct number of who, how many people I'm died. Go- I'm going to be honest. I'm going to go off of, from what you've what you've told me, I'm going to go mm-hmm. off of how many apple trees are planted because it seems like the only time they had a motivation was the yeah. concealment or the perpetration of a crime. That's the only time yep. they tried to fucking do anything. To I actually do farming. <laughs> I guarantee yeah. you the only time they legitimately planted a fucking tree in that orchard was when there was a body underneath it. I'm, I'm going to go Probably. out on a limb and I'm going to say that because I just don't feel like, you know, like, Ma Bender and Pa Bender and you know, just the whole fucking Bender family went out there like grunting away. Um and just like, this feels like a perfect day for an apple tree. Like, no, no, no. They were trying to hide a fucking body. Yeah. Like I, I agree. so however yep. many fucking trees, that's my quote. That's my guess, right? On like yep. how many bodies. I wish I could tell you how many trees were there. I don't know. Uh, Never made clear. That's my guess. That's my guess. I I wanna ask, has anyone done tests on the water of the well at this fucking place? Because that I I will fall back to so much also found two bodies in in the the well. well. Okay, but that's that that's later. I'm trying to say, and not to not to just like "Eh, whatever, but like not just try to like gloss over, but I will say like this family came in and very strategically like took this plot of land. They wanted this fucking Ag- piece of again, land. Again, I'm going to the, tell you why they wanted for, more. Oh, well, when? When, Joey? I've been waiting it's for coming days up. and days it's and days. It's coming up with getting close to you the end of it. You know we because... record these episodes in advance, Joey. I've been waiting, mother... Ah, I know. I need and to I'll... know. Like We got a bit. We got a bit. It's fine. I, I, Just I, I, It's right, coming. You're killing well, me. You're killing me. I know, and I, and I like it. What? Mostly the papers at the time placed the blame and leadership solely on Kate Bender, right? Yeah, they thought the she was the one. Yeah, yeah, she was the one in the in the public eye. She was described yeah. as natural eye. devil and sly. They also said that she was the one that slit open the throats of the victims. She slit because... open the throats of the victims. Yep, she... They also said that she... <laughs> yes, she, <laughs> she slit, slit them open, yeah. <laughs> All right, all right. I'm here yeah. for her. I think I'd be honestly, a it was more of a Firefly family thing, you know, like the I Devil's no Rejects. We... Oh, okay, yeah, Devil's Rejects. Yeah, yeah. They were all murderers and just as complicit as the others. Yeah, Gebhardt played off as a simpleton with his hyena laugh, but I think that he was very cunning and he yeah. used that to put off any semblance <laughs> of blame. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, now I know what you're asking. Well, what happened to the Benders? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. And I would ask that next. Yeah. You just asked that earlier too. Well, and you're I wanted ask to know why. Yeah. But anyway, sir. Yeah, why? <laughs> we'll get to what and why. You've so, been saying I, that. So what? Happened I know to you him can now? imagine that this story has a similar ending to Richard Ramirez, where the no. whole neighborhood he terrorized, chased and beat him down to the ground as he ran, as scared as a little boy. I don't have enough faith well, in this neighborhood. I, I'm not with you on that one. But sadly, I could see it happening. Sadly, that didn't happen. Shit. Yeah. On the night that Alexander York was writing his petition to the governor, okay. the Benders freaking hightailed it out of town. Damn. They caught trains to separate destinations. Whoa. Gebhardt and Kate Bender took the train to Texas. So okay. they're in Texas now. They what? jumped from the train and made their way through Indian territory. I've so it made that. it even harder for them to be found okay. because they, yeah. So we'll get into a little bit more later, but I just want to bring this up. So yeah, we're still going. We're still Damn. going, buddy. Okay, okay. They brought a bunch yeah. of guns. They bought a bunch of guns with the money they made from fencing the goods they took from their victims. Okay. Yeah. So they bought a bunch of ammo. This They're whole going out fucking Firefly town style. is just phase two of yeah, like it's phase a two. multi-phase operation. Is that what you're telling me? Yeah, they weren't alone either. I'll tell this is why it gets crazy. Damn. Okay, so keep going. Kate traded in her skirts for what is considered men's clothing Ooh, back that's in a lot the of money 1870s. Back then. Yeah. Yep. They pulled into Denison, Texas and stayed to wait. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, right? Yeah. Denison, Texas and stayed to wait for Ma and Pa Bender. So okay. once Ma and Pa Bender arrived, they all decided it was time to head to New Mexico because New Mexico at this point was not a state yet. It was a territory. Yeah. And most everything was flowing into the uh, uh, Native Americans' land. 
And so they're looking for res. They're looking at the reservation. Well, there weren't even reservations yet. They just pushed them literally into New just their land. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They weren't even they weren't even yep. described as yet. They just pushed them into New Mexico because they wanted Texas. Okay. So that because it was not a state yet, it was filled filled with people who were just like them and people who would also protect them from authorities who would come looking. Mm. This was heaven for them. Yeah. So. It was literally the day that Leroy Dick found the first bits of death under the cellar of Benders that the Bender family set out for New Mexico. So these are the time periods coming up. And so much to the chagrin of the detective and Leroy Dick, the governor took another week after they found that to lay the reward for the capture of the Benders. So they are already gone. Yeah. But it was lucky because the tavern owner remembered a young couple and an old couple who camped out across the tavern and denizen so there's a trail forming oh the detectives are following them okay they caught up to them almost okay the detective and dick knew they're on the right trail okay well it's here where we'll come to where the benders meet their old friends and people who help them get where they're supposed to go and their land the McPhersons. The McPhersons were a group of horse thieves and outlaws that mm. could unload all of the goods that the Benders stole. Uh. The McPhersons were also family of the Benders. Okay. And they helped set up the group in Kansas and help them set and help them escape to Texas. They were the ones that said, This is the plot of land you want. This is where you want to set up. The Benders were the front for the McPherson's outlaw group. Okay. And okay. that's why they were killing people, to steal everything from them, to fence through the McPherson's mm-hmm. in New Mexico. And so they had a whole train running, and they knew that they were going to eventually have to leave, so they create they created a way for them to get out. And that's why they they got actually were able to leave, is because the McPherson's set this up Here's where you're going to go this was if the something tip happens. of the iceberg of the operation. Yep. Yep. Uh, they were just, uh, they, yeah. it, it was a whole plan. Okay. To think of this when I heard this part in the story, I was like, oh my God, this makes Damn. so much sense because it wasn't just them, you know? Yeah. It was a whole group of it. It was basically the mafia. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. You yeah, know? Yeah. It was the mafia dons during the prohibition area. Pro- prohibition era they were controlling oh. things from behind the scenes well the detectives start were following them right so they got to denizen texas yeah they had heard that these people and kind of guessed it's the same detective by the way yeah. and leroy dick both following these people into into texas so he followed the bender family and bill mcpherson who was one of the mcpherson family to a camp on Mud Creek in New Mexico. So right on the uh, okay. right on the other side where they can't be found. Okay. They ha- the detective just missed the family, but they were so close cuz they had just moved out to form another camp. And so he found their camp basically like there's nothing here. So they went to the McPherson's house, which was in Texas at this time. Okay. Basically they're hopping borders, you know. Yeah. They and detectives really and lawmen don't like going into New Mexico because obviously it's uh, a lot of Native Americans there. There's really no law. Is Mexico and they really in the name? They're yeah, very scared of that. Right? Yeah. And they really can't do anything there. They can't really arrest people yeah. because it's not really in their territory. They don't it's have territory run by... within Mexico. So how are they possibly going to have you know jurisdiction in New Mexico? That makes sense. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And that's exactly where the benders were. Just literally Even, on the other side yeah, of the tour. They're like stuff. looking like, on the yeah. They're like looking like can't yeah. see the you know see them and they're like ah Just sorry like bud. Flashing angles, flicking yeah. them off, you know. Yeah. Like, okay. Well, throwing people's wrists it, at them. I don't know what the fuck they were doing. Yeah. Even yeah. it got so big that the Pinkertons, the famous detectives at yeah. this time, sent a detective to Kansas. Too pink for to us, look over the graves. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. He looked at the. He looked basically the detective got there. Started looking over the graves. Yep, the graves. 
Yep. And just trying to, you know, figure out what happened. He was also trying to find them. So not here. He actually ended up disappearing in the mountains and was never seen again. <laughs> I found this I don't lady know if with he beautiful just ankles. Got killed. And I must yeah. go off to get married. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> if he got killed or if he just was like, I'm done. Yeah. You know, uh, the imagine is that he got robbed and killed. Yeah. Um, imagination. Well, hopefully. I'm not a fan of the Pinkertons, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Well, skipping ahead a little bit, you know, basically the the McPhersons and the Benders are on one side of the river, right? Yeah. And laughing. Yeah, laughing. And the lawmen eventually, well, they run out of money. The yeah, governor's so now like, they're hey, broke and the criminals yeah. are laughing. Yeah, pretty okay. much. And and the lawmen are like, hey, the governor's like, we're not sending you any more money. Bruh. Texas is telling them, we're not giving you money to investigate this because it didn't happen in Kansas. Bro, we're literally, it didn't we happen never in Texas. It happened in Kansas. paid you to do this. Yeah. We and never can- paid you to. That was can that was like three states ago. Why yeah. are you over here asking us for money? Yep. Yeah. And okay. and, and it's pretty much the lawmen are running out of money. So they're like, hey, yeah. we, Alexander York. Well, and the law only Edward runs York on money. Are, yeah. Exactly. And they're sitting there like, okay, well, we still need to find these people. Well, yeah. They're kind of running out of money, time, and it's starting to be less of a story, honestly, okay. in the so, so it's because losing like hype, it's it's losing, losing hype because they're just the people are like, Oh, it's fine, the benders are gone. I mean, it's still obviously well known that the benders are the benders, you know, like Yeah, people, but it's like it's everywhere but back on the small community where it really boom were like, really hit. hit. And like the rest yeah. of the country is just kind of like, have you heard about these new criminals? Like they're just yep. like, yeah, they're starting to not give a fuck. Okay. Well, getting to the winter of 1875, um, Bill one. McPherson was captured by lawmen. Oh, no. He actually got caught because he got sick. Yeah, he got sick. How and could like, anyone they, tell? It, 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 well, he got really sick. Uh, <laughs> he got really sick and they captured him. They used that as, an, as a way to capture him while all the other McPhersons were gone. Okay. And so they captured him. They took him to jail. So he's his story eh, is not really over. It kind of is, but it's kind of not. So there are a few different versions of what happened to the Benders, obviously, because that's kind of what normal back in those days is a few different versions. So the first story I want to say is kind of the fun story. Ma and Kate Bender were caught under the pseudonyms Almira Monroe and Sarah Davis. Okay. These are their two pseudonyms, right? Okay. They were found by a woman named Frances McCann. She dedicated four years of her life to finding them. She was that internet sleuth that sat there on Wikipedia. No joke. She literally dedicated her life to finding them. Damn. And so, you know, Frances McCann is differing opinions about her depending on how you believe what happened in the story and what happened to the Benders. So they both were taken to jail Mm -hmm. and they both were put on trial. While they were on trial, they threw each other under the bus. So, you know, Elmira Monroe and Sarah Davis, you know, they threw each other under the wheel, you know, turns a phrase. But eventually... It fe- you found out that Ma Bender, who was going under the pseudonym Almy- Men- Almyra Monroe, mm-hmm. was married seven times, and that the man who became Paul Bender was actually named John Flickinger. Yeah, so <laughs> is that's is, is part of the the first part of the story, and John Gebhardt and Pa Bender were never found in this version, and Ma and Pa Bender stood trial. 16 years after they found the first body. So in the trial, witnesses flip-flopped on who they could identify. Mm. Some I some ID'd like, okay, I know that's Ma Bender. Yeah. I know that woman is Ma Bender. And some of but they were like, I, I don't think that's Kate Bender though. Let me see her ankles some, again. Yeah. Yeah. And some people were like, I know that's Kate Bender. Yeah. But they couldn't ID Ma Bender. I saw her so ankles his, again. Yeah. 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 Right. So the only person during the trial that could positively ID them was Rudolph Brockman. Mm. Our little buddy that <laughs> he got blamed for a lot of stuff. Yeah, so. But he did save Christmas eventually. He did. Rudolph did. Uh, his, his his nose shone very bright. Nothing to do with leading a tavern or op- yeah. owning and operating a tavern. 
Yeah. Well, as he looked at Mom Pa Bender, his Ugh. nose didn't glow red. Oh. He looked at him, Ma, He looked at Ma and Kate Bender. He unequivocally said, "They are not Ma and Kate Bender." What? What? Yep. Rudolph, no. <clears throat> yep. Both Almira Monroe and Sarah Davis <sighs> were acquitted of the crimes and went to Michigan. Damn. So, well, hold on, hold on. You think, can't just jump people, to Michigan. That is the opposite end of the fucking country. Yeah. Well, what was That's told? Huge distance. Was was they were they lived in Michigan for a while. What? Um, if you believe this story, if you believe this story that they were Kate, and because some people said they were Kate and Ma Bender, okay, and some people said they weren't, okay, but they didn't okay. have enough. Yeah, th- that's why this is part of a, a story. Uh, one of the endings from them, because yeah. it's never truly known what happens to them. That's a but big fucking jump, dude. Yeah. And that they went to Michigan, but they had similar looks. And if you, um, they the people looked at their pictures and were like, I think. And Leroy Dick actually looked at them and uh, said, I know that that's Ma Bender. And Leroy oh, Dick knew them very well, oh, and he said, I knew that's Ma Bender. But when he looked at Kate, he said he didn't think that that was oh, Kate. Oh. So part of it was like that's why they were so. That's why there was a little leeway in there, is yeah. that they just couldn't completely ID both of them. And in that story, mm-hmm. Ma Bender murdered Pa Bender. Oh. Yeah. And so that was part of the the thing, too, is that she killed um, John Flickinger, who me, was the labeled. Let me know if I'm jumping ahead, but which do you believe? Well, we have I'm another jumping sto- ahead. A couple other okay. stories. Yeah, yeah. How many versions so, do we got here? It's worse than the multiverse. We have, That's why I we don't have watch three. Marvel movies. I know we have three, and and usually right. I hate when there's an open ended thing, but yeah, it's 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 part of it, you know. It's, it's part of life, adventure. especially this time. There's a lot of like, there's a lot of records, there's and there's a lot not of records of people dying. Um, so you kind of have to deal with what we get. Okay. So other stories say that Alexander and Edward York murdered. Well, I would say killed the Benders themselves. Okay. Yeah. Sought one thing pointing just to revenge this. upon yeah the they sought just revenge yeah yeah, yeah. one yeah. thing pointing to this was that the Yorks did not attend any of the trials Ooh. of the other two women okay um, they left it alone and a lot of people said that that is because they already knew that they killed the Benders yeah Why the and fuck with would Edwards you yeah with Edwards uh rage. Yeah, maybe they found him, and maybe they kind of didn't want to put it on themselves yeah, that they yeah. murdered people. So, yeah. I personally, I'm not a big believer in that one. Okay, okay. The last story is the it's the it's the opposite of Richard Ramirez's story. That's why I say it's like the Wait, the Benders he just kills stayed... the entire town. Yeah, no. <laughs> the, the, how they caught him. Oh, yeah. okay. The last story says the Benders just stayed out west and passed out, eventually living like hermits, never facing justice for their crimes. I believe that one. I think that that's the one that I most believe in, I and believe it sucks to say, but I think that's what happened. They just stayed in New Mexico. Nobody could get to them, and it they just faded away, and they stayed on places. I'm a constant believer that like the the folks that should get their comeuppance, you know, don't get their no, comeuppance. And that most of the folks that go out here and like vigilante themselves to give folks their comeuppance are actually super, super, 100% like far off the mark. Um, I think one of mm-hmm. the last folks to actually like legitimately pull off being like a solid fucking vigilante. And yes, he has some own, his problems in his own personal life. John Brown Batman. was kind of like, no, fuck, <laughs> fuck that rich douchebag piece of shit. Whoa. He's a rich douchebag piece of shit that's running around beating up poor people. Fuck that piece of shit. Anyways, no, John Brown, famous abolitionist, famous yes. fucking abolitionist who was so, so he treated his family like shit. That, that is a part of the story. But like, he was one of the last vigilantes who actually like went out there and gave people their come up and, you know. But other you than that, know who actually raided his his uh, who raided the John Brown rebellion? One of the Benders. No. Oh, okay. Was it uh, well, Dick? Civil War. 
Well, yeah. Civil War general Robert E. Lee was the person who led the military into John Brown's rebellion. One of Brown's the most rebellion. famous English-speaking generals in yep. history had yep. to take that motherfucker down. Yep. I'm just saying. Motherfucker yep. was real. Um, yep. So, yeah, but yeah, anyways. Kind of one of the last ones. But yeah. yeah, for sure. So we'll really never know, honestly, and which is just mm. a terrible thing about these kinds of stories. But again, like we said, it's a choose your own adventure. Kind of listen to the story. Hey. Think, come up with what you want. You know, if they they never really, to my viewpoint, I don't think they were ever caught. I think Gil's on that same page. Yeah, you know, they could have been in that trial. Who knows? They were very slick. So, yeah. Well, that's the story of the Benders, the Adams family on mess. <laughs> Thank you all for joining yep. us for this incredible series put together by the one, the only, the incredible, the immaculate Joey. Thank you, Joey. Yes. Thank you all for listening. And make sure to do our Spotify polls if Ooh. you listen on Spotify. Yeah. It's going to say Dick, Roach, Bender, Rudolph, uh, Flickinger. That's the greatest names from this episode. Um, no, yes. it'll probably say something else. But I did want to give a super, super, super late shout out because I remembered partway through the episode. We've been getting a number of new listeners from New Zealand. I have no clue how that's happening, but um, welcome. Yeah. No, no, no. We're super stoked. Like Joey and I talked about it the other night. We were like, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit. Like it was just very random. Like we don't know how we have connections to some of these listeners out there. And so anytime this just kind of like happens and the the spores of the black cat report just like go up into the stratosphere and spread across the world and eventually fall down in a little rain particle of algorithm and like start blooming and their their the mycology takes over a new environment. Damn it, we are so happy to be that invasive mushroom species. Um but yeah, so shout out to y'all. We have no fucking clue who you are, but we we, we see you. So we well, love you. Thank you. Thank you for coming on yep. board. And everyone, we'll see you next week. And we have a Ooh. amazing, amazing, special little episode for you guys. It's actually a really long episode. Oh, so. yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, you a... guys are going to love it oh, because it uh, took Gil a lot to set this up. Yeah. So. This was, this Thank was, you, Gil. you're welcome. Um, uh, For the team, homie. Um, But yeah, this was, I'm not going to say it was a motherfucker because it wasn't a motherfucker, but I had so many, so many of my hopes in that basket and it actually panned out and holy fuck, do we have an incredible exclusive coming to you? Um, Yeah. Super excited about next week. Um, Yeah. Anyways, thank you guys. Cool. Thanks. See you next week. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to the Black Cat Report in our episode 66 on The Benders, American Frontier Serial Killer Family Part 2. The book we used for this episode was Hills Half Acre by Susan Genasis. Please rate and review us wherever you get your podcasts. And we'll be back next week with an awesome interview that we are super excited to share with you. See you then.